Welcome back to our channel. This is Father Mario Sobrewaniti once again, coming to you from Ariccia, Rome. I have told you in our first video that I'm actually now a missionary here in Rome, managing a retreat house together with the Pauline priest and brothers with me, a retreat house that has been used by the Holy Father for the past six years. He was supposed to come this year, but unfortunately he had coughed and did not make it. But just the same, all of his cardinals, the governing body of the church we call the Roman Curia, came to us and visited this place. I'd like you to visit the place and see a bit of what we have here in Ariccia, Rome. This image behind me is the image of Jesus, the Divine Mercy, and this house is dedicated to him, the Casa Divin Maestro. This is our house. And I say to you in Italiano, benvenuti, welcome. Come and let's see the place. This is the entrance where the Holy Father usually comes and is welcomed by the community. And I welcome you first, first of all, to the one most important place for us. And this is exactly the first place that the Holy Father goes to when he comes to visit. After greeting each one of us, he comes in here and stands to pray before his Master and his Lord. This is the chapel dedicated to Jesus, the Divine, uh, our Divine Master. The Casa Divin Maestro is a huge place. It is in a 12 hectare area, 128 rooms, six chapels, Many, many uh, meeting areas, six refectories. But the reason I brought you to this place is because of an idea of our founder, Father James Alberione. He remains to be the most prolific founder in the whole history of the church. He did not just found one, two, three. He founded 10 congregations and institutes. But every time there was a blessing, he will tell those people who attend the blessings, we thank the Lord not because of a new house. He will say this, because in this house there is a tabernacle. And we thank him because he again assures us of his loving presence. For in the tabernacle is to be found everything. Without the tabernacle, nothing. And dear friends, Holy Thursday is a celebration precisely of this wonderful event of a lover who wants to be constantly present in the midst of his beloved people. Someone said this, that the Eucharist is God's continuing presence in the midst of his people. Even the church in the Ecclesia de Eucharistia, this is what it said. The Eucharist is not just a gift among many other gifts. It is the gift par excellence, because it is the gift of Jesus himself. What will a lover do for his beloved? There is nothing that beats the gift of presence. And Jesus, by his power as God, decided that on Holy Thursday, he would declare this. This is bread, this is cup, this is wine. I will be with you. Through this, take this in memory of me. This is a lover who desires to be constantly close. Someone we can still approach. Someone we can still talk to despite the fact that he's already up there in heaven. But through the bread and wine consecrated in the Eucharist, Jesus makes himself present to us. And dear friends, I love this story which I've told many, many times in the past. A parish priest was so happy with one of his parishioners who every day would pass by the church and then before going back home after working would still pass by again the church. And the parish priest would observe him because all he would do is just sit down before the tabernacle and then stay there five, ten minutes. The parish priest one day got in touch with him, waited for him and said, you know, I'm so impressed because you're always there in the chapel. But when you go before Jesus in the Eucharist, do you say the rosary? 
Oh, Father, I'm not so good with long prayers. You probably say a novena. Oh, Father, definitely not. You probably say the way of the cross. Oh, Father, that's too long, really, and I would not know how to do it. So when you go before the tabernacle, what do you say? You know, this is what he said. And for me, this is the best prayer. He said, I just look at Jesus in the tabernacle and I say, Jesus, I am here because you are here. There is no prayer greater than that. Because the gift of presence is to be accepted with our presence. The Eucharist takes center on Holy Thursday. But remember this, St. John in the Gospel did not speak about the institution of the Eucharist because he wanted it to be in the context of something more beautiful. For in that Last Supper, what John emphasized was this, this God made man, this creator of heaven and earth, this master and Lord, takes towel and basin, wraps it upon himself, and then washes the feet of his disciples, a job reserved only for the lowest of all slaves. What is he doing? What is he telling us? Just this. Even as I have come to be amongst you, it is because I love you. And even as I offer you my life, it is because I love you. And even as I would like to stay with you forever, it is because I love you. Because I would like to serve. Because I have not come to be served, but to be of service to all. And you know what this God does? In order to make sure that he's constantly present, he decided to institute another sacrament, which is the sacrament of the priesthood. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, God's love is so that he would choose weak men, incapable men, men who are unworthy, just so his presence would be a continuing one amongst us. I've always shared this in the past. I entered the seminary when I was 13 years old. We were 42. Second year high school, 21. Third year high school, 15. Fourth year high school, 15. First year college, 5. Of the 42, only 5 became priests. Were we chosen because we are the best and it comes to academics? We have so many brilliant companions, classmates who left. Are we, 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 have we been chosen because we were better, good? No. Have we been chosen because uh, we, we were seen to be the most capable? Definitely not. Have we been chosen because we are the best good-looking? Evidentia, hindi. But why did God choose us? Because of something. Because God who calls enables those he calls. God must have taken a look at us and said, Pwede nang pagtyagaan. You know, the patron of all priests has this wonderful thing, a message for all of us priests, when he said, The priesthood is the love in the heart of Christ. We are supposed to represent his love. In our love like His must be a love that offers ourselves in service. The bread is to be broken. The bread is to be eaten. The bread is to be given. That should be the life of every priest. Today, pray for your priests. Pray for your priests because we need it badly. We too are sinners, probably even greater than you are. But God in His infinite mercy continues to challenge us to receive what we have learned, to preach what we have received, and to live what we have preached. I'd like you to pray for one young man. Before I left the Philippines, I talked to him and he said, Father, can you keep a secret? And I said, sure, although I always do not keep a secret. And then he said, Father, please pray for me because I'm thinking about the priesthood. I look at him and said, what's happening? I've known this kid. I've seen him grow. Medyo mas guapo lang siya ng konti. No, he's really good looking. Economically, 
His parents are okay. The money is, is not a problem. The looks, not a problem. He's well-educated. He comes from a good family. And now he's deciding to become a priest. This guy's present work is, listen to this, assistant mall manager of not just a small mall, of one of the biggest malls in the Philippines. He came back from China where he was supposed to be assigned as a manager because the mother was sick and then died of cancer. But here is this guy, and I was telling him yesterday because I called him up and said, can I share your story? And he said, okay, Father. I asked him why. You know what he said? I feel, Father, like I was supposed to get married with my girlfriend already. We broke up. And now that I am single, I felt like I'd like to serve. There is much that I could do, but I believe I could be of greater service if I become a priest. And then he underlines this, to let people know that God loves them. I wanted to cry before him, and I said, I'm being put ashamed by this young man who now desires the priesthood because he has understood the priesthood of service. Let me just end this today because I would like this to be short. Mother Therese of Calcutta, India says, said once, my dear priest, thank you for bringing us Jesus. Thank you because of you we can reach, receive to Jesus in the Eucharist. But then he said this, but please, when you celebrate the Mass, celebrate this as if it is your first Mass. Celebrate every Mass as if it is going to be your last Mass. Celebrate every Mass as if it is going to be your only Mass. Pray for us that we may understand that the true greatness of a man is when he humbles himself. For when he humbles himself, the greatness of Jesus shines through him. Pray with me. Father in heaven, you have sent us your only son to be amongst us, our high priest. And he has shown us the meaning of true love when he offered his life and continues to make his presence be felt through his priests. I pray for myself. I pray for all priests. I pray for Pope Francis. I pray for Cardinal Tagli. I pray for all the bishops. I pray for all of us who are struggling with the priesthood. Lord Jesus, make us understand that you call and enable those you call. May we constantly feel your mercy in us that so we may show that mercy to others. This is our prayer through Jesus, High Priest, our Lord. Amen.